Hi, right, my name's Phil. I'd like to talk about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss the launch of Labour's local and mayoral election campaign, which, unlike last year, has actually tied in the link between their pitch for the local elections and what they're aiming to do in national government. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So, as I suggested, Keir Starmer made much of Sunak's failure to call the general election for May the 2nd. Although the Prime Minister can choose when the election is held, it's very common to be held on the same day as the local elections of the same year. And there's actually only been one general election in my lifetime which did not even take place in the spring. And that was the last one. Starmer accused Sonak of bottling it and deciding he wanted to spend a bit more time playing with his helicopter. But in terms of Labour's own offer, I thought the launch today was quite interesting in that it presented people with a practical reason to vote Labour in these sort of more local elections that had little to do with bins or potholes, but with an eye on the general election. Because last year the Tories complained that, that Labour's main campaign lines were for policies which councils had no power to implement. It was like, you vote Labour councils, you're not going to get these powers anyway. And he was using national policy proposals to win local elections. And yeah, sure, if it weren't for the fact that literally every other political party, including the Conservatives, do exactly the same, you would say, well, yeah, maybe there is a complaint there. Can you stick to the local policies, please? But the reason Labour did that, of course, is because they wanted people to treat the elections as a confidence vote in the Westminster government, not their own local Conservative councils, some of whom may well be doing their best. But this year's different. Labour still, I mean, they still had all those national policies mentioned, but they had an interesting pitch which ties together what local powers actually can do, or more specifically, what they will be able to do once Labour are in government. Both Keir Starmer and Angela Rayner made speeches where they promoted one of Labour's main policies, which is to have more decision making devolved. Local people with skin in the game, as Starmer said, will make better decisions than people, say, sat in a Westminster office. That has been their pitch for a while and they promoted it heavily today. And this was an appeal aimed not just at the local elections, but specifically, I think, the mayoral elections in particular. Labour are planning to devolve more power to local authorities, including elected mayors. You know, basically saying to them, look, you know what... What investment is most going to benefit your region? So you make the decision. Which gives a good argument for using local and mayoral votes, not just as a protest vote against the government, but as a strategic vote to have the best person in place to take advantage of those new powers. After all, look at Ben Houshen, the, the, the Tory mayor of Tees Valley, screwing over people in his region for personal profit. I see the latest news today is that his operation tried to extort money from a, a different business. They've got slapped in court and it's going to cost taxpayers maybe four million pounds to deal with the legal costs. Now, this line from Labour is basically a pitch to people. It's saying, look, we're going to give your locally elected representatives more say in investment. We're, we're not going to tell, for example, the North East. We're not going to say to you from London what investment you want. You're going to tell us. You're going to make those decisions. More power to decide what's best for your area. Now, who should have that power? Someone who wants what's best for your region or someone who looks for the best way to pocket as much of the money as possible for themselves. And the fact that Starmer chose to launch Labour's campaign in the West Midlands is telling. There are a couple of little uh, uh, wrinkles here. One is that there's a mayoral election here with a Conservative incumbent, Andy Street, uh, and one who will be very difficult to shift. There are certain mayoral contests which Labour are very likely to win, including London and Greater Manchester, for example. Uh, they are quite likely to win that Tees Valley one as well. But the West Midlands contest is, I think, one of the two that Labour are going to focus on. It's a tough one. Um, the, the Conservative mayor, I think, is still the favourite to win. But it is winnable for Labour, I think. And if and if it is, I mean, if they won it, there would be two huge advantages. First, the practical advantage that Labour would be devolving power to a local administration where there would be little friction in terms of aims. 
So the benefits of, of Labour's policies of more devolution regionally would work more smoothly. Second, the political advantage is that it would come as a bitter blow to the Conservatives. You know, if the Tories lose this contest, it will not be a loss that they've already priced in. They think they're going to win this. And they're probably right, but they're not certainly right. Unexpectedly bad results are more likely to trigger a knee-jerk reaction from Tory MPs. See, results that they expect to go badly, they've got weeks to think about it and to think about what they do about it. They're expecting it, right? If they think on May the 2nd they're going to win a particular contest like the West Midlands contest, and then on May the 3rd they find out they haven't done, all of a sudden panic. You know, whether that panic results in a quicker election, in which case... The Tory performance art, as Starmer described it, can draw to a close sooner rather than later. Or Sunak resigns, which, OK, means we're going to have to wait much longer for that election. But it also means the Tories will probably chart a path to even more likely oblivion. Both Rayner and Starmer talked about levelling up. That was a big theme. It's a popular idea. It's just that the Tories never intended to deliver it. And how do we know? Because as Starmer said today, there's no plan for it. Didn't have a plan. They just waved vaguely in the direction of Brexit and said, look, this will deliver levelling up. Will it? How? Because, you know, money. Labour are explaining how they'll deliver it, including how regional investment decisions will be made regionally, not in London. Rayner said she wanted to give the people who create our growth the benefit of doing so. And she was clear she meant working people here, not fat cats in penthouses. Starmer said he chose Dudley, partly because it's where Boris Johnson gave his levelling up speech. Right idea, Stan was basically saying, but no political will behind it, no effort, no plan. Now there will be. And it's worth considering the difference here as well. Starmer and Rayner both rattled off a load of policies for government. You're not going to get just by electing Labour mayors and Labour councillors. It's for when they're in power. But as I say, they provided that reason to vote for the same thing in the May elections. Labour councillors and Labour mayors will help accelerate Labour's plans for levelling up because they will be working towards the same aim. Better rewards for working people. What are the Conservatives offering? They're talking about fixing potholes as investment. It's not investment, it's maintenance. The roads already exist. The investment already took place. It's maintenance. Investment would be new roads or rail, but those just got cancelled, didn't they? What else? Oh, stop the boats. The boats are at record numbers. Cut NHS waiting lists, they're at record highs as well. Grow the economy, we're in a recession. Tax cuts, people would rather you kept the few quid the tax cuts are going to save ordinary people and gave them the infrastructure to get better jobs, better housing. Oh, and let's not forget their major attack line. Angela Rayner once sold a house, did she? The Tories have made such a fuss that the police investigated and found she did nothing wrong. The Tories are trying to make something of the fact that Starmer hasn't seen the tax advice that she's received, as if she's hiding things from her own party. But this isn't the case. Starmer made clear that in a separate interview that although he hadn't seen it, it's because he doesn't need to. It's not appropriate for him to see it, but his team had. So Labour officials have, and they're going, yeah, this is all fine. So the leadership, it's all above board. This is just like two years ago, when the Tories and their client journalists tried to drum up something over nothing over the curry in Durham, only enhanced Starmer's reputation. And the Tories risk doing the same favour for Rayner now. And in the meantime, while they're whining about this, they're not explaining to the public why they should vote for the Conservatives. It's quite hilarious because all these Tories are going, well, why does Angela Rayner just publish this tax advice? Well, she could do. She could uh, redact some names from it and publish it. But why should she? They're, they're having such a fuss about it. They're getting so worked up about it. If I was a Labour strategist, I would be saying to her, let's say she'd have come and said, well, shall I just publish it? I would say, no, why would you? You're in the clear. If they manage to arrange a second police investigation, you'll still be in the clear. Let them froth over it. Because, you know, while Labour are explaining the benefits of voting Labour to people, what are the Tories doing? She sold a house. How dare she sell a house? You own houses. You all own houses. In fact, Michael Gove has yet again this week watered down legislation that the Tories promised to protect renters. Because why? Because so many Tory MPs are landlords. At least we haven't got Greg Hans waving his joke around this year. I can't see. I can't wait to see what Jonathan Gullis is going to do to help his party's efforts. Is he going to go wandering the streets with an inflatable banana?
It'll also be interesting to see if the Tories try the expectation management trick, which backfired on them last year. Do you remember that? They tried to claim that, oh, we expect to lose a thousand seats. And people are going, that seems a bit much. I mean, you're probably not going to lose a thousand. Oh no, we expect to lose a thousand seats. The, the, the reason they did that is so that when they lost about 800, they could go, oh, we did much better than expected. That's a win. But in actual fact, they lost way more than a thousand. And they just therefore made things worse for themselves because they said, we expect to lose a thousand, which seemed a bit much. They lost even more. It's like, well, that's even worse now. I wonder if they'll try again this year or just steer clear of the whole thing. I mean, they can't claim to expect to lose a thousand seats this year because they haven't got that many to begin with. But it's actually the mayoral elections, which I think are going to be the big game. Be interesting to see which way the, the media goes on this, but the mayoral elections are really crucial. There are two current Conservative mayors up for election. Um, Andy Street is the big scalp Labour one. There is another as well. It's not a scalp. There's a few new mayoralties coming up. One is for mayor of York and North Yorkshire. No incumbent, brand new, right? But if Labour can take that, that would be a good prize because it's Rishi Sunak's own stomping ground. So those, I think, are the two main contests to watch out for, I would say. London will, of course, get a lot of media attention. Um, and if Sadiq Khan wins by a large margin, that'd be hilarious. Uh, Lawrence Fox is certainly not going to win it. Uh, but North Yorkshire and, and West Midlands, I think, are the ones that Labour are going to be fighting very, very hard for. Those are their moonshot targets. The ones the Tories will probably win but they might not, and Labour would really prize them. The Tories will be expecting to win both of those, so it will hit them hard if they don't. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.